The Chicago Bears are at a crossroads with four picks in the upcoming draft. Ryan Poles and company have the chance to continue to add on a foundation of what's hopefully a contending team or at least a Super Bowl champion in the future. We'll be discussing my thoughts on the players the Bears might grab right after the intro. To Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's the word, Chicago Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for all things Bears related. I'm your boy, Big Kev. Go ahead and follow the channel at Shy Bears Central all over social media. You can also follow me on YouTube at Chicago White Sox and Cubs Central if you enjoy baseball. So now let's get to the content last season with a not so good team. The Chicago Beard Bears still managed to win seven games. Even though they left what seems like dozens of points on the field and multiple wins on the field, uh, speaking of fields, they shipped him off. Justin Fields is now playing for one of the greatest franchises in the NFL in the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Bears find themselves once again searching for their franchise quarterback. With other holes to fill and only four draft picks, Ryan Poles and company have their hands full come in, come late April. So Steve-O already hit y'all with his mock draft. And without further ado, I bring you guys Big Cavs, Chicago Bears 2024 mock draft. Now, we all know what's going to happen here with the first pick. I think I'm one of the few people who believe the squad should draft Jaden Daniels out of LSU. I know they won't, but I like what I've seen out of the young fella. It would be fun to see him in the Bears uniform. But if they draft anybody other than Jaden Daniels or, uh, of course, Caleb Williams, I'd be more than a little upset. So I'm not trying to hear the name Drake May in any way, shape, form, or fashion come draft day. I'm not trying to hear it. And if they, if they do that, man, I'm going to be pissed off. Now, with that being said, even though since 1990, 59 quarterbacks have been selected in the top 10 and only four of them have been first-team All-Pro, that's Peyton Manning, Hall of Famer, Matt Ryan, has some MVPs type situations, Cam Newton played in the Super Bowl, and of course, Patrick Mahomes. But even though that's the case, the Bears will be drafting with their first pick, overall pick, Caleb Williams. The man played 36 games. He threw he threw for 766% completion rate, 10,000 yards, 93 touchdowns to only 14 interceptions and nine yards per completion throughout his career in college at Oklahoma and then over at um, USC. So while there are other good quarterbacks in the draft, the, potentials of, the potential of Caleb Williams is just too good to pass up on. Uh, I'm unsure if he's truly the generational talent that people say that he is, but if a, as a fan of the Chicago Bears, I'd rather draft him and have him be a bust on this team than not draft him and watch him become a Hall of Fame quarterback elsewhere. I couldn't care less how he dresses or what colors his nails are. As long as he performs on the field, I'm okay with him being the number one overall pick for the Chicago Bears. Let me know what y'all think in the, in the comments below. I'm pretty sure 99% of the people are going to say to uh, uh, Caleb Williams. All right, so Chicago Bears, they won too many games uh, to secure the top five picks, two top five picks in this upcoming draft, but having two top ten picks is just, just – you know, just as good, to be honest. Um, in the first round, they're stacked with a talent at multiple positions. The Bears are effectively have their pick of the litter at the number all pick. They could go with best available or need, depending on what occurs between picks two through eight. So with a plethora of options, I've been able to window down my list to just two picks, even with the likes of Olu Fashionu out of Penn State or uh, Lantau uh, out of uh, UCLA, Dallas Turner out of Alabama. All of these guys are good talent. Uh, and, you know, and of course, it wouldn't be good to bad to look at them at the ninth pick and, of course, other players. But the Bears should either move the pick or decide to go with Joe Alt or Jared Verse. Now, Jared Verse, man, watching film on this dude was like, wow, did he really just push that offensive lineman straight back for 15 yards into the quarterback for a sack? Yes, he did. Did he just burst off the line of scrimmage? right at the snap as soon as that ball was snapped and got to the quarterback in less than two seconds 
Yes, he did. Did he just stuff the run in the backfield? Absolutely. Did he just bat the ball at the line of scrimmage? Yes, he did. This dude is an absolute beast, man. If Joe Alt is not available, this is an easy choice for the Chicago Bears. If they don't trade down, they will make a move for Jared Verse. This, this guy is a beast in both run defense and pass defense. And the front office has addressed the offense a lot, a lot this uh this thus far this offseason. And let's not forget that Matt Eberflus is a defensive-minded coach. Now, the Bears turned their season around last season when they got Montez Sweat. And uh, this guy was basically not single-handedly, but the Bears benefited from having him on the squad. If they get an edge rusher on the other side of him, the likes of Jared Verse out of Florida State, man, man, this defense will be problematic problematic in 35 games that jared verse played he had 1508 snaps 27 sacks 30 hits 77 hurries 36 of those hurries was last season in 2023 and three batted balls he got great play recognition he's super strong like this dude is strong it's all get out and he could become one of the top players of the position in the nfl if he develops properly so if the Bears don't get him, uh, of course, uh, if Joe Alt is not there, uh, they could be looking at the other guy uh, out of Alabama, um, Hunter out of Alabama. But Joe Alt, man, if the if the Bears want Caleb Williams or whoever they draft their quarterback, but in this uh, this mock draft, Caleb Williams to have the immediate success that we've seen a few quarterbacks have uh, over the last couple of seasons, he will need to be protected. Now, the Bears already got Braxton Jones, and he has been solid, but there's nothing wrong with utilizing Braxton Jones as a depth piece and upgrading at the position. Last season, the Bears had a bunch of injuries, a bunch of injuries on the offensive line. So having as many pieces there as possible just cannot be a bad thing. Now, Joe Alt um, out of Notre Dame had 36 games in his career, 2,214 snaps, Four, only four sacks allowed in all of those games, only five hits allowed in all of those games, and only 15 hurries. Put that into perspective, uh, Jared Verse had 36 hurries by himself on Florida State last year, and Joe Alt has only allowed 15 hurries in his entire college career. So you can't go wrong with a player of this caliber if he's available at nine. Now, I personally don't think he will be available at nine, but I had to do my due diligence and put him here as a target for the Chicago Bears because it makes sense to get him or even Powers um, as well. But I think he's he's uh, out of Oregon. But Joe Alt is a good choice. However, defensively, I do believe that Ibraflus has something to say about having two top uh, five picks all the things they did for offense and free agency, uh, getting Swift and getting Keenan Allen and, um, you know, obviously getting a quarterback with the first pick. Um, they picked up another tight end as well. Uh, they also addressed some of the offensive line through trades and uh, free agency as well. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if Eberflus is in Ryan Pohl's ear saying, hey, Listen, if one of those those great uh, wide receivers is not available at nine, uh, let's go defense with that number nine pick because getting a top 10 defensive player, hmm, that's pretty good for the Chicago Bears. All right, so with round three, this number 75 pick, uh, the Chicago Bears select, in my opinion, um, Malachi Corley, a wide receiver out of Western Kentucky, now missing out on the top three or four receivers in the drafts may not be a bad thing for the Bears because they already have a stellar wide receiver room on paper with Moore and Allen and everybody else that's in that wide receiver room, and that they can all catch the ball. So we know that it's not necessary to 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 not not say waste, but utilize a high pick on another receiver to put him in that room that's already crowded, to be honest. Um, but this doesn't mean that they shouldn't at least look at a few of them as long-term projects, um, and especially with uh, Keenan Allen on an expiring deal. Like, we have no clue what he's going to do with his contract, contract situation is going to be uh, next season. So uh, now Pose has always been forward-thinking, and drafting Malachi Crowley from Western Kentucky wouldn't be a far-fetched move from him. Crowley is 5'11", 215 pounds, and he was voted the top receiver on the national team at the Senior Bowl. He continued, he came to, well, he well he went to uh, Western Kentucky as a running back, but he converted to wide receiver. He did not 
lose any of those running back skills. This dude is a monster in the open field, and he's also a beast in the open field, but not in a hyperbolic type of way. This dude is a literal beast. He will run you over. He will lower that shoulder. He will stiff arm you, and he has breakaway speed. Breakaway speed. He reminds me of old school Steve Smith from the Carolina Panthers a little bit. Compact, fast, doesn't shy away from contact. And they call him the Yak King for yards after catch. Because once this dude gets the ball in space, he is going to outrun you. And if he doesn't outrun you, he is going to run over you. I saw him run over a dude on the sideline on a quick little five-yard screen pass to the sideline. He ran over a dude and that turned into a 75-yard touchdown. So, hey, the Bears should be looking at this young man, uh, Malachi Corley, for the number three pick, number 75 pick in the third round. Now, the Bears only have four picks. I'm not doing any trades or anything like that. Um, They might. I would like to see them trade with Washington Steel and maybe get something for that number one pick. But, again, I think they really, really want to get Caleb Williams, so they're going to go ahead and stick with him. It, unless Washington offers like some mind blowing deal to the Chicago Bears, and they do have a bunch of picks in this upcoming draft. All right, so for the fourth pick, uh, the fourth round pick, 122nd, if the Bears do not get um, Joe Alt or Powers in the top rounds, they still have to address their offensive line. So I'm going with Tanner Bortolini out of Wisconsin. Now, even though the Bears shored up their offensive line with two veteran centers, Ryan Bates and Coleman Shelton, you can never have too much depth at the on the old line. You just can't. Nate Davis and Tevin Jenkins, them I was gonna call them some fools, but them boys, them boys, they missed. 11 games combined last season. And it's like the, the offensive line can never really get any, at least pass coverage continuity. As we know that the Bears led the league in rushing. We got a strong rushing offensive line. But, hey, can never have too many uh, offensive linemen. Neither neither center that we have on the roster is signed to a long-term contract. So Ryan Post could use this pick to draft and develop a future starter. Bordellini started all 12 games last year and 10 games the year prior for the uh, Wisconsin uh, Badgers, but he he also put on and displayed co- combine numbers that should coincide with what Pose really wants at that position. Bordellini posted the fastest three cone time and the second best forty and ten yard split among all offensive linemen at the combine. That's nothing to sneeze at. So if this guy's available in the fourth round, you might want to look at him at center. Uh, as a senior, uh, the interior lineman showed great leadership for the Wisconsin Badgers. He had a ton of experience with almost 2,000 snaps in his career, and he's versatile playing both center and guard. His athleticism is already NFL ready, and he has great hand placement and wide base with excellent timing. All right, got it all done in under 15 minutes. There you have it. It's Big Cavs 2024 Chicago Bears mark mock draft. I cannot wait until the weekend of April the 25th. I done already requested time off from work. We're about to turn up with the gang, me, Hayes, C-Dub, and Bobby to do the draft live with you guys make sure y'all right here but in the meantime go ahead and hit that like button that follow button that subscribe button that notification bell and also go ahead and uh comment let us know what y'all think about these possible draft picks look up the um the stats on Tanner Bordellini uh Malachi Corley and of course y'all already seen Jared Verse and Joe Alt and Caleb Williams but those later draft picks can turn into something special for the Chicago Bears. Again, don't forget to follow your boy over on Chicago White Sox and Cub Central for the Shot Town Sports family. I'm your boy, Big Bro. I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Peace.